You guys won a tactic that won four trophies in one season, scored over 170 goals, and also averages roughly around three goals a game. If you do, then do stick around. Hello guys, it's Josh from FM Scout, and today I'm going to be bringing you another video, and it's going to be a breakdown of NAPS 42112. And do you know what? This tactic is a ton of fun to use. It looks a little bit different to the usual tactics we post on this channel. But one thing I noticed is it performs with all levels of teams. We've taken four viewer suggestions and then one suggestion from myself, and we've tested with all of them, and the results were absolutely incredible. Um, it, it really was a treat to use. If you guys do enjoy these tactics, be sure to leave a like on this video, comment below on what team you want to see tested with next and also throw some formations what you want to see me create and do subscribe to the fm scout channel but let's get into the video and start with what is going to be the most unpopular choice the powerhouse so we're going to kick things off with the powerhouse because i know you guys typically don't like to see these being tested with but at the end of the day we like to include a little bit of everything on this channel and that is including using the best teams using some of the middle teams and also using some of the lower teams at the moment we are prioritizing making up based off viewer requests so if you don't like the teams you see you can change that by commenting below on the team you want to see being tested with but with PSG it was an absolute miracle tactic I mean we're talking Champions League the League One French the Cup Trophy de Champion we also come out with 174 goals only conceding 18 as well and it was a real real dominant season over in France compared to second place Nice and usually you can expect this with PSG but still that is an incredible amount of goals scored in that season and obviously to win the Champions League as well is a real thing that cemented this for me PSG don't always do that in the save so it is very good to see four trophies in one season and if we go over to the squad it is really really impressive you can see some of the stars that are on show obviously 56 goals from Mbappe 54 for Messi Neymar with 44 33 for Kambembe Map always hits the nail on the head when it comes to set pieces 17 for Ramos again Verratti with 13 9 for Fabian in terms of the assists we've got 34 for Neymar 29 for Verratti Mbappe coming in with 25 24 for Hakimi Messi with 22 18 for Mendes, 13 coming in for Vitinha, Sarabia with 11, 9 for Fabian, Bernat with 6, and it carries on as we go on. So we're seeing a ton and ton of goal contributions, whether that be assists or goals from pretty much everybody in the squad. If we go into the data hub really quickly, we're looking at 4.58 goals per game. Now, we're specifically not going to have that in the title because I know this is not going to be achievable with, obviously, the average side. So that's why we're going to title it based around sort of a three-plus goal tactic because that is a rough average over across all of the saves. So we're definitely not baiting you in with that one. But let's go in there. So 4.58 goals per game, only conceding 0.47 as well. So a very impressive stat line defensively and also offensively, which is something you do expect with PSG. But this just sort of takes it from what you expect to above and beyond that. Obviously, nearly getting on, you know, four and a half goals a game. Absolutely incredible stuff. We then got over to what I believe is sixth place, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Obviously, a team in the Bundesliga, a team which I actually have quite a lot of fun playing with as well. And we've done very well with these. Not only did we actually manage to come in second, and we only lost by a point, by the way, in the Bundesliga, we also took home the Pockel Trophy against Frankfurt in the final. And this just shows that this tactic can do it with these tricky sort of teams. Obviously, in this division, you're looking at Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Leipzig, and um, possibly even Frankfurt, Leverkusen, that should be finishing above this side. And we've come out proving them wrong and put on a really good display, scoring 89 goals and only conceding 32. So a really, really, really good season here. If we go in terms of the squad, we'll go by goals again. We're going to see 25 coming in from Turam, Plea coming in with 22, 17 for Benabassi, 11 coming in for Stindl, Hoffman with nine, seven from the house. Kone coming in with four, three for Avaldi. Um, in terms of the assists, we've got 19 for Hoffman, Turan with 12, 10 for Luca Nets, Julian Weigel with eight, eight for Stindl, Scally with seven, six for Kone, Plea with five. You know, not as nuts as the French League, but obviously we were a severe underdog in this division. We're not going to be scoring eight as many goals when you are one of the giants relative in that division. So overall, still a very, very good performance overall in the season. And the stats were really in our favour as well. 2.62 goals per game and only concede a 0.94. So it's really impressive this because actually... You're looking at a team which obviously isn't one of the favourites in that division and is still managing to not even concede a goal a game and you're scoring over two and a half a game against some really tough sides in this division. So, so far, 
two saves done, two very impressive set of results. We then go over to another viewer's suggestion, that is going to be Bristol Rovers, obviously in Skybet League One in the English Football Division. And you know what? This went really well as well, because obviously we managed to win it, and we're not predicted to by any means in imagination, and we won it very comfortably. We also made it all the way to the final of the Papa John's Trophy, where unfortunately Portsmouth were a little bit too strong for us. But you know what? Still a very impressive season. 124 goals scored and 40 conceded. So could be a little bit better defensively, but considering we're nowhere near the favourites, to win it by that many points is a massive, massive success. And going in terms of the squad, we're going to have a little look here. Let's go into the goal factor. That is going to be... 32 coming in from Marquise, Collins with 21, 19 for McCormick, Sinclair with 17, 7 for Evans, Rossier coming in with 4. I do want to quickly say there are some players from this save and possibly other saves as well where the players were on loan, so their stats sort of get wiped out if you sim too far, which I have a very bad habit of doing, so I do apologise. I'm going to be sure to sort of make that never happen again. But still, as you can see... The one thing I'm trying to show you mainly, more than the actual number of the goals, is the amount of contributions. You're looking at four players there, which would have been five with the loney player we had as well. Getting heavily involved with the goals and the assists, we don't need to read them out again, but I mean, look at it. We're looking at several players contributing highly with assists, which is what you want to see from any football team. And especially when you're doing it with a side like this in this division, it's a real, real good sign of what you can expect from this tactic. And in terms of the data hub, general performance, we're looking at, again, a ridiculous display, 2.7 goals per game and still way under a goal conceded, which I have to keep saying, Nap seems to hit this on the head every single tactic. He bangs on the goal scorer, but also he doesn't sacrifice his defensive ability. He comes in non-stop providing sensational tactics. And that's why I'm always so keen to get him out to you because he does a really, really good job. If we go over to the next save, which is going to be with Galatasaray, another viewer suggestion. Um, again, we're seeing a very similar pattern. Dominant in the division, also winning the Turkish Cup against, um, that is going to be Besiktas. I believe is how you say that. So two trophies in one season, 143 goals scored, only 29 conceded. Um, the league, again, very, very dominant, 94 points compared to Fenerbahce second. A real, real dominant display from a team which I think is predicted to finish fourth. So again, we are going above and beyond the expectations in a real, real successful Turkish league save. And if we go into the squads here again, we can see 47 goals from Mertens. They have got some really, really good four players here. 47 from him, 33 for Akadi. We've got Severich coming in with 27, 19 for Arda I but he was going to say about 12 coming in for Alavira. And you can see again, the assists, we're going to see a very similar pattern, eight and above. I mean, we've got 24, 23, 14, 12, 11, 8, 8 and 8, and then a couple of the sevens as well. We are seeing a wide variety of assists. And do you know what? When you see this tactic on paper, you're going to see why I had to bring it to you because it is very different. It looks, it looks very different compared to a lot of the other tactics. So it was very unique and that's why it took my eye. And I'm glad I give it a go because it was really, really good. And in terms of the goals, we're looking at 3.97. So again, we are nearly approaching that four game mark. I'm not going to title the video four plus gate and four plus goals because I know that has annoyed some people. So we're going to focus on naming it three to 3.5 plus. And, you know, obviously, if you are playing as a really good team, you can easily get over four goals per game, as you've seen here. Um, and conceded per game as well, 0.81. So defensively, across all of the saves, we've actually kept it really, really to under a goal a game. So that's always impressive to see in what I would describe as not actually a defensive tactic. So you are really getting best of both worlds here. So we've got to got one more team to test with, which is going to be another viewer's suggestion. Let's go over and see how we've done. So the last test is going to be with St. Pauli in the Bundesliga 2. And again, very successful results as we're used to seeing. Um, coming out as champions very, very comfortably in this one. Obviously, we're talking close to a 30 point sort of, you know, gap on that. Um, a ridiculous display. 111 goals scored and only 27 conceded so a very very good sort of ratio there and if we go into the squad again we'll have a quick look in goals in the goal sorry we've got 26 24 20 10 8 7 and in terms of the assists we've got 18 18 9 8 8 6 4 4 so you know still some good numbers obviously we're never going to top psg because their players are absolutely mental but in terms of the data hub then we're going to be seeing 3.26 goals per game 0.79 conceded so still very very good statistics even in this division with a team which i didn't think actually Actually was predicted to win it if I'm if I'm sure I don't think we were one of the favorites so overall a very very good set of tests in my opinion as five saves five very
very different leagues as well um, in terms of quality of teams. Some really highs, some really lows, some mids. So it's been a nice mixture of teams, but as always, you can definitely influence who we test with by simply leaving a comment, leaving a like, and getting involved by subscribing to the FM Scout channel. But do you know what? Let's go over and watch a couple of the games and see how the goals go in. We're going to watch the French Cup final against the Lille in what was an 8-1 win. So a very dominant display here. And I picked this game out, obviously, because there is a ton of goals, um, which you can expect with this tactic, as I do keep saying, as Lionel Messi obviously gets a long ball over the top there. And that's quite a good finish, actually, outside of the foot into the top left-hand corner. And it was one of many goals in the game. As you can see, obviously, we're going to be seeing another seven come from us as Mbappe goes down the left-hand side. One thing I noticed with this tactic, obviously, as you're going to see when you see the actual picture of the tactic, a lot of the focus and a lot of the wing play is obviously going to be done through the left-hand side. And that is going to become very clear when you see how it does shape up. But do you know what? It is, it is by far one of the weirdest looking tactics I've used, but also one of the best ones. It really does master both sides of the game, attacking, and defending and with any sort of standard as well. It's a real refreshing thing to see. It's quite nice using something different other than a 4-2-3-1, a 4-4-2, or, you know, sort of a 4-3-3 um, a more than a 4-4-2, actually. But you can see we're creating several chances. Um... Going forwards, obviously, I know we are a very good team, but you can replicate this with any side, guys. As we saw, at the end of the day, we got great results with anyone. It's pretty common sense that the better the players you have, it means you're going to get better stats, yes, but you can also do this with the smaller teams. You can replicate the play and you can still get really good results. As we can see, we're absolutely destroying them at this point. Um, there's no real point in playing a second half. Obviously, as I say that, we do get a goal here with Bamba, um, who drives at the team. Is he just going to run alone? He isn't. It's poor defending there, to be fair. It's going to be Chico. Um, Donnarumma, absolutely abysmal. He has to keep that out. It's right at him. It's an awful parry. Um Oh, which shouldn't have gone in. We do have a bounce back here, though, with a little set piece. And again, set pieces of this tactic are absolutely incredible. We saw how many goals some of the defenders were getting. And we're going to finish it off with a penalty from Neymar. So we're now going to get into the tactic breakdown. If you are enjoying yourself, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the FM Scout channel. If you want to check out my channel as well, the link is in the description. I'm also over on Twitch. I live stream basically every day. So do come over. You can find that link via my channel as well. And we can talk tactics, discuss what you want to see. People also feature on this channel, so you know, do come and get involved. But let's go over and break down this masterpiece. So it is going to be a 4 2 1 1 2, as mentioned in the intro. But what's really interesting about this is this side of the field is obviously it looks empty, right? But the good thing about it is obviously you've got this player here who obviously covers in this area here, and you still obviously have the width because the fullback will go up and down. And it is a really different approach to this sort of tactic, but a really refreshing way of seeing. As I say, there's a lot of 4 2 3 1s, a ton of 4 3 3s. So whenever I get a chance, chance to actually release you a tactic that is a little bit different i hope you sort of appreciate that that you know i'm just trying to switch things up trying you know have a you know bring you something of a variety you know just get a little bit more tactics out there so in terms of the mentality it's going to be set to balanced in possession you want standard pass into space overlap right and left focus play down the left and right shorter passing higher tempo work ball into the box low crosses and run at defense in transition you want counter press counter distribute to the fullbacks and throw it long out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And in terms of the player roles, we're going to go over to the keeper first, the sweeper keeper on take fewer risks and tackle harder. The wing backs on attack are going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to name or literally list off one. Pass it shorter, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter, run wide with the ball, cross from the byline and get further forwards. The two centre-backs are going to be exactly the same as well. Both on defend, pass it shorter, dribble less, take more risks and also hold position. Two volantes, both on support, a little bit different now. So we're going to go over to the left-hand side of one on support, pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards close down more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. And on the right, it's going to be take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards, and also tackle harder. Then have a centre mid on attack, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, tackle harder, and get further forwards. On the left-hand side, obviously the one winger we have, the inverted winger on attack, shoot less often, close down more, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, and get further forwards. 
the striker, the sort of centre one, the advanced forward, pass it shorter, shoot less often, roam from position, tackle harder, and move into channels. And on the right, it's going to be exactly the same, just obviously positioned a little bit to the right. Now, a few things about this tactic. You can obviously limit the bookings you'll get in. You can restrict them. You can obviously possibly, you know, not get as many suspensions by taking off a lot of these tackle harder options. Now, this does impact the game. I personally believe it's a good thing to have because your players actually get stuck in. They get involved. They will win the ball back, whereas sometimes they won't without this instruction on. But obviously, it does come at a cost. You do pick up a lot of bookings. So that's the only thing I'd actually advise changing if you're sick and tired of getting your players booked. That's the only thing I'd actually look to change. But that is going to be this tactic broken down. It's a ton of fun to play with. Be sure to test it out and show some love on the video. But guys, that is going to be it. As mentioned before, if you guys have enjoyed it, be sure to show some love by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the FN Scout channel, and I will see you on Sunday for another tactics video. But have a good weekend and I'll catch you later.